to the In Memory of Man podcast, a show dedicated to the brave new world of crime, artificial intelligence, and news. The future is now. Here's your host, criminal trial lawyer, researcher, and author, Robert Kiesling. Hello, welcome. This episode is going to be called The Most Dangerous Threats of AI in 2021. This is centering around a number of studies that have been done from obviously multiple sources and I thought it was extremely interesting Interesting what number one was. That said, let's just jump into the news first and we will go into the most dangerous threats of AI here shortly. Chinese smart TVs are snooping on their owners. In wake of COVID, employers step up automation and use and the use of robots. Quick note on that is that the employers are a, no, a number of employers are not taking back some employees due to the fact that they implemented AI during the crisis and therefore they don't need the employees back because they have the AI and it's become more efficient than the employees. Uh, again, the articles are up on my podcast, also on the YouTube channel. Mind-blowing advances in brain tech spur push for neural rights. So in other words, neural rights being simply, hey, you can't hack my brain in a nutshell. And they're saying in some of these this article that there are companies that say that they have the technology to basically hack what you're thinking. Scary stuff. EU regulation sets fines of up to 20 million or up to 4% of turnover for AI misuse. So what that means is that people obviously are already misusing AI in companies and private corporations, people, governments, depending. And they are learning that they need to be able to find these people because of the abuse of AI. Well, uh, that's great, but ultimately, and, and I want to hear comments in that, oh, different note, thank you for all the comments on the eminent domain. And again, I, I'm not saying that eminent, eminent domain is ultimately good, but I, I, what, I did want to spark a conversation relating to that, and especially with the intellectual property and software and corporations. And I'm not saying that they should do that to the individual, but again, it's, it's all just a slippery slope, and that's why I'm really trying to start this discussion now, because if we don't have it now, it's by the time that AI becomes so dominant, which I think to some degree it is, um, we could be in trouble. Okay, being touched by a humanoid robot makes people happier, more likely to listen to machines. <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. ACLU joins over 50 groups in calling for Homeland Security to halt use of Clearview AI. Again, I, I'm not an advocate of the, uh, the Clearview and they need to really, really clean that facial recognition software up. Air Force's Skyborg AI system flies for first time in Mako drone. Do you understand what that is? That's like Skynet, right? So they have AI autonomously flying this they call it a drone, but it looks like a jet to me. Again, the article's up. The problem I have with that is hacking, and uh, the next episode we're going to cover is going to be when AI becomes the hacker, so you can get a better understanding of where I'm coming from. I mean, humans alone, uh, and hacking really is, is exploiting a system uh, that for and using it for something that is not intentionally or originally made for. Uh, that's a very, very basic definition and simple, but I have other definitions. Again, you can just look at some of the articles that I have to further your understanding of that. Now, let's get into the most dangerous AI for 2021. And what I, what I mean by that is that AI that can be exploited for bad things, evil things. Number one is deep fakes, and if you don't know what a deep fake, I'm going to give you an example of how dangerous that can be. But deep fakes essentially are people using software or AI to create someone saying something that they have. And I think you've seen the one of uh, uh, Barack Obama, or the presidents on YouTube, or whatever. People were making them say stuff that they didn't say, just as an example. But 
driverless driverless cars as a weapon now this goes into what i was talking about with the drone that is autonomous that looks like a jet with the military and ai making those decisions because if they can use driverless cars as a weapon then what's to stop them from hacking or hijacking that why can't they have someone operating that again it's it, someone did say uh, a while ago i i don't know i think it was kevin mitnick or someone um who it was a hacker and now helps um, with various uh, governments, uh, I think the U.S. particularly, to help against hacking. But he said that everything will be hacked at some point. So keeping that in mind, when we're trying to develop all these things, I think that that's a, this is all extremely dangerous. And I don't understand why we're not looking to all of this. And it, well, I guess I do because other countries are going to do it regardless. So we have to, we have to basically protect ourselves by doing what we're doing with, with some of the, these most dangerous things that we don't know the consequences of. And again, no, no scientist at this point knows whether or not AI will become Skynet. And so we're going down a path that we have no idea what's going to happen because AI learns differently than humans and humans learn differently than AI. And it's just about being efficient. But I digress. So fake news is number three. Phishing is number four. If you don't know what phishing is, it's like, uh, I don't know if you ever get an email that says it's from, say, like your insurance company, but it's really somebody else and what they're doing and then fill in the information or, hey, you're late in a payment. And you're like, oh, then you put all the information in. Well, then they get your handle and then they get your password, then they get your credit cards and all that. That's phishing. Number five, burglar bots. If you didn't know what a burglar bot is, it's kind of, it just reminds me of the hamburger burglar for some reason, right? But burglar bots are when they can um, drive by a house and they can get all your information just by driving by your house. They can get your, your through like either your refrigerator, through your, your Wi-Fi connected thermostat, etc. Number six is fake art, um, and I, I can understand why that would, um, I don't know, it's just kind of, I'll have to look into that a little more, I, I'm not really understanding that. So, given all that, let me give you an example of the deep fakes and why it could be extremely dangerous. Let's say that you're at work, right, and let's say you have a, you have a kid, kiddo that is at school. Then you, you receive this message on your phone, and it says that, and then you have this video of, of the kiddo being kidnapped by someone, right? And then you're freaking out and then they say, don't contact the school, don't contact, don't contact so-and-so. If you contact anyone, I'll know. And if you do, then uh, I'm gonna do bad things to, to the child. I need your credit card number or I need X, Y, and Z, or you need to go and drop cash off at a certain place by this time. And if you don't, I am going to um, do bad things. Then the uh, the hacker, um, so the person freaks out, and as any parent would, and then they go ahead and pay whatever amount of money as they're blackmailed into doing that, only to find out later that the individual never ever had their child, child was safely at school, no problem, um, but because of how they approached the individual and because of the nature of the relationship, obviously, they went ahead and got basically blackmailed into paying money that they didn't. That's an example of deep fake, but it goes even even further than that. I mean, uh, think about it in terms of uh, politics and about uh, other countries and how they can create AI-based platforms or, or digitization of, of an individual and then create, and so chaos, basically, with those countries. So again, a lot to think about. Um, uh, quote of the day is AI is only as good as its data and what that means is AI is biased because AI is first created by a human being and that human being has subconscious bias and sometimes intentional bias uh, when they create a certain software when they feed it that information before it goes into machine learning or deep learning or any other of those things those, those are back on my other prior podcast but that said I'm just trying to let you all know that um, we really, really need to take this subject seriously. That said, if Skynet doesn't take over by my next podcast, I will see you then. Thanks. Bye.